Hello everyone, today I want to talk about the new upcoming character Chlorant and hopefully help you figure out if she fits your playstyle and team composition, so ultimately if this character is worth your wishes. I also do a separate video on Seatree next in case you're curious about her. First, let's quickly cover her skill kit. The normal attacks aren't too interesting, so let's skip straight ahead to her elemental skill. For its duration, it replaces her normal attacks with pistol shots generating bond of life, and the elemental skill turns into a lunging attack consuming bond of life. In a sense, this character is a straightforward builder and spender character revolving around managing this resource, like you see in many other RPGs as well. Do normal attacks to build, press elemental skill to spend. Additionally, while the skill is active, incoming healing will be transformed into Bond of Life as well, but Chlorant gets to heal herself by using the Elemental skill. Also, switching to another character cancels Chlorant's uh, Elemental skill, which means she can receive healing like usual again if needed. Her burst skill just deals some damage and generates Bond of Life, and the passive skill, the first one, displays Fontaine resources on the minimap. The second one, when electro-related elemental reactions are triggered, the damage Chlorant does with her elemental skill will be increased based on her attack stat, stacking up to three times. And I believe it only scales up to 3000 current attack on this character. It's like a built-in mini Shenhe buff if you want to think about it in that way. And the last one grants her extra crit rate whenever you generate a certain amount of bond of life, stacking up two times. I believe this will just happen automatically just by using her elemental skill as it is intended to. Thematically, she seems very similar to Ayato. Her skill kit is also mostly designed around dealing normal attack damage with the elemental skill, but obviously Shiori's gameplay seems more intricate than Ayato's thanks to the bond of life mechanic. I believe in reality her playstyle will feel much closer to Sino, for example. You have a set rhythm of elemental skills that you weave in between normal attacking. The bond of life management seems fairly simple though, just do a couple of normal attacks to build bond of life and whenever it's max press the elemental skill to consume it, or whenever you hit a certain threshold might be more accurate to say. Her burst skill is also a bond of life generator, so the good old elemental skill into burst skill into elemental skill combo seems to be a thing on this character as well. To me, she seems like one of the most active and fast paced characters yet, which makes me very excited, I really like this type of playstyle. The build isn't super special, just the usual DPS build, crit rate, crit damage, in her case attack percentage and electro damage bonus. I don't think her elemental burst skill is super important, so energy recharge I wouldn't bother too much about it and focus more on elemental mastery, especially if you want to play her together with dendro characters for the extra aggravate damage. For artifacts, very straightforward, again gladiators finale and then for the main stats attack percentage here. Electro damage core bonus obviously in her case and crit rate or crit damage whichever one balances the stats better and again her burst skill doesn't seem super important to me, so something like the Shimenawa set could be really good on her if you just want to ignore it pretty much completely and of course the new set the um, I think it was this one <laughs> Let me check really quick uh, Yes, with the bond of life mechanic is obviously also very good if not the best probably the best and then for weapons, the obvious choice is something like the Festering Desire if you still have it, but it's a very old event weapon, so in case you don't have it, the Black Sword from the Battle Pass is really good, the Iron Sting, you can craft it with the extra Elemental Mastery and Elemental Damage bonus is a nice stat stick, and even if you want to lean in in the Bond of Life mechanic, the new craftable weapon, or I shouldn't say new at this point probably, but the craftable weapon from Fontaine is really nice as well for a lot of extra attack, which synergizes quite well with her passive skill to get the extra damage bonus on her damage dealt by the elemental skill. Whenever there's a new Electro main DPS character releasing, we always come back to the same old question, why not just play Raiden instead? Of course, Chlorinth might have a little bit higher personal damage, but she has no utility whatsoever, and Raiden has very good personal damage, but she also provides a team-wide elemental burst damage buff and generating energy. So whenever you have a lot of sub-DPS character, like for example in the national team, as a rule of thumb, Raiden will almost certainly better in any situation. So that's why you don't see a lot of um, DPS characters on this list, because we need to full-on lean into the hyper-carry um, 
kind of playstyle with Clorant. So we need some key characters for this, for example, Nahida is great for the aggravate spread damage and the extra element of mastery, Baiju kind of for the same reason, then Kazuha for the extra buffs or something like C6 Sara. If you don't have any of these characters, I think you're almost certainly better off with Raiden. Again, you can still play Clorant, but the question is, why not just get Raiden instead? There isn't really this one team that stands out to me. Again, you just want to buff Clorant's damage, so you can kind of mix and match these utility characters as you see fit. For example, Kazu instead of Sucrose or C6 Zara. If you don't want to have a Dendro character in your team, that's one consideration to make is that you don't need Elemental Mastery at all. You can even drop all Elemental Mastery from your Corlint build itself. It doesn't do anything if you don't have Elemental Reactions. And then any healer, of course, Bandit is good. Something like C4 Layla can be good for the extra normal attack damage buff. And of course, Zhongli. If you go for Zhongli, you could obviously even make an argument for something like Yunjin for the extra buffs but also geo resonance and then the other option is you go for elemental reactions with the dendro character and you can go for something like dendro resonance for even more elemental mastery with baiju or budget baiju instead of course you can even go for bennett again and if you have this team you can even make an argument for another sub dps character which is fischl because you trigger a lot of extra electro damage and aggravate reactions with her passive skill but also if you have constellation 6 because chlorine obviously does normal attacks and one last team I want to highlight is an actual Taser team, which might sound a little bit weird because it goes against pretty much anything I just said. But Yelan's skill kit is just so exceptionally good with her high personal damage and her damage buff that it might just work out. You trigger a lot of Electro Charge, obviously, and extra damage from Fischl, but you also have your damage buff still from characters like Zhongli or Yelan herself. So you do very good personal damage with Chloran still. But again, other Hydro characters I would probably stay away from. Alright, we made it to the end. I hope this was somewhat helpful to figure out if this character appeared to you. I will get Chlorant and try her out, so stay tuned for that. Until then, have fun and bye bye.